What's in a name? Everything. The power of a name has long been immortalized in prose, poetry, and history. It is your face to the world, your ambassador of quality that reflects your ideals and aspirations. Thompson's, a name, a family, a tradition of excellence. So it is with Thompson's Toyota, where our professional and courteous staff are eager to help you drive home your dream vehicle from the largest selection of new and used Toyota cars and trucks at the best prices. And if your vehicle needs service, our Toyota factory trained and certified service technicians have the skill and expertise to do the job right and do it right the first time. Thompson's Toyota, where you'll always be treated like family. Hey everybody, thanks for being here. Today, we're going on a special fishing and diving adventure to Cuba. We'll be in the Jardines de la Riena, famous for its bonefish and amazing underwater world. Now this is a trip that should be on everyone's bucket list, so stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf, and this is Angler West Television. The Jardines de la Riana, or the Queen's Gardens, were named by Christopher Columbus in honor of Queen Isabel of Spain. The third largest barrier reef in the world, this 150 mile long chain of mangrove islands lies about 70 miles off the coast of Cuba, with most of it being protected as a national park. There are no permanent residents and no commercial fishing is allowed. It's an unspoiled paradise on earth, especially if you like to fish or scuba dive. Today we're on the water with Bruce Bells of Clackcraft Boats who's targeting bonefish with one of the expert guides from Avalon Fishing Centers, a private company that has an exclusive right to yeah, fish really this area. Now. Okay, good. Up. Is he off? Just hooked my first bonefish of the trip and it came off. Oh well, there'll be more. <laughs> oh no, he's on there. What's going on here? Amigo. Yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> These things are like hooking a Volkswagen going down the road at 40 miles an hour. Oh my. No. Oh. I've caught big salmon in my life, but these pound for pound, oh my God, this is like catching a Chinook on an eight weight. Within the hundreds of square miles of prime fishing, it's likely that you will not see another angler. No bigger and than that the fish you cut. hook will have never been hooked before. So these bonefish are definitely not educated, and they are bigger than average for the Caribbean, which makes them incredible fighters. Nice bonefish. Wow, nice fish. See, si. six or seven pound, beautiful. That's a big bone. Yes. Big bone. These uh, bonefish in uh, Cuba, they are so naive. They probably, so a lot of these fish have never been hooked before, and, and uh, they're just awesome. I've caught bonefish. And, uh, the Bahamas, uh, Mexico, Cuba. Good boys. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Nicely Thank done. you, sir. Thank Good you. job. A trip to these islands most often begins with a stay in Havana, famous for lots of reasons and maybe at first a little intimidating to most Americans. The truth of the matter is, the Cuban people might be the friendliest that I've ever met anywhere in the world, and their reaction was always positive upon realizing that I was American. The Spanish cannons still stand ready to defend Havana Harbor, over which the old lighthouse witnessed events such as the destruction of the USS Maine. And inside the old lighthouse, you'll find a gift shop with hordes of Europeans buying cigars by the suitcase full. For certain businesses, capitalism is alive and well, and there seems to be no shortage of demand for the supply. Through the tunnel and into old downtown Havana, and there they are, 
the many classic cars that Cuba is famous for. There's actually cars of all ages, makes, and models, but if you like classic cars, Havana is definitely for you. It would take several days to see all of the tourist attractions of Havana, such as the old capital, built with the same plans as the U.S. capital. The key to seeing everything is to find reliable transportation, which isn't hard. The many bike taxis are a good, inexpensive way to go, as they will get you just about anywhere for just a few dollars. But maybe my favorite was the horse and buggy, which is still a common mode of transportation in Cuba. Or hire one of the many classic taxis, which is an unforgettable way to tour Havana. Be sure to stop by the Havana Cathedral, one of the first burial sites of Christopher Columbus. And the Floridita, a neighborhood bar made famous by its most frequent customer, Ernest Hemingway, who's still at the bar ready for another round. Music is an important part of an establishment like this, which attracts customers from around the world. And if you're going to have a drink with Hemingway, you may as well visit his home, which is about a 45-minute taxi ride from the Floridita. Here you can see his famous old typewriter. And the Pilar, his old boat where he wrote The Old Man and the Sea, on which he fought many marlin. And a visit to Havana wouldn't be complete without a visit to the National Hotel that at one time was called the Hilton, a playground for the rich and famous Americans and others worldwide. Back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, if you were an actor, actress, athlete, musician, or gangster, you probably stayed here. And Batista's Palace, now part of the Revolutionary Museum, a symbol of the last days of imperialism and the success of the Cuban Revolution complete with the machine gun bullet holes up and down the staircase. Of course, Cuban-American relations have been somewhat strained in the past, and it's hard not to take a second look at the wreckage of the downed U-2 spy plane, proudly on display at the museum. But as far as I can tell, the chances for improved relations in the future are looking pretty good. Welcome back to Havana, Cuba. I'm Justin Wolf. We're on our way to a Cuban fishing and diving adventure, but first we'll spend a few days in Havana to relax and do a little sightseeing. Tourism is one of the major industries in Cuba, as it's very popular with Europeans and others from around the world. And many of them will end up going fishing, which is a big deal in Cuba, even with the locals, who crowd the accessible waterfront every evening. Now it's time to hop on a bus for about a four hour ride through the countryside and sugarcane fields. We're with Bruce Bells and Doug Hayes, who's on his first trip to Cuba. We've arrived at the small coastal town of Hukara, where we'll board one of the Avalon fleet's boats for the 70 mile trip to the Jardines de la Riena. But before we get too far, we'll have to hook up with a commercial shrimp boat for a bucket full of prawns that will end up being our lunch. Nice looking bunch of shrimp there. After a great lunch, a short nap, and a few relaxing hours, the islands appear in the distance, and the water suddenly has a bottom, which is crystal clear and appears closer than it really is. Our home will be the floating hotel called the Tortuga, newly remodeled with all the comforts of home and docked nearby is the fleet of very good quality flats boats. The first thing you might notice is Franco, okay, the 12 foot careful. crocodile, who is definitely not a pet. So keep your toes away from the edge. So we got a big 12 foot uh, croc right here and I'll be swimming with that guy tomorrow. Hopefully he doesn't like gringos. Swimming around the Tortuga might be a once in a lifetime event, but where Doug is swimming tomorrow will be far away from Franco as he goes scuba diving. While Doug is out diving, Bruce is out targeting bonefish. He already has his first fish with number two coming up. Okay, good. Let him go. Let him go. Yes. Good job, sir. Good job. Good 
little fisherman. <laughs> That's a average size bone there. This is probably a you know good average bone, you know, bigger in some places. The last one was fantastic. Nice fish. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Two bone fish in 15 minutes. That's not too bad, and the day's just started. <laughs> It's going to be Bono. Yeah, this is my uh, fourth trip to the Ardine de la Arena. It's uh, Island of the Queens. It's uh, located about 70 miles uh, south of Hukara, Cuba. And it is the most fabulous place for bonefish. Uh, right now the uh, tide is uh, going out, I believe. And we're looking for tailing bonefish. They go into the uh, sand and they're digging out crabs. And uh, the tide's a little high right now. Uh, what we're looking for, we're looking for schooling bonefish. Um, we're kind of in a, uh, what we call a cut. It's just kind of a, uh, almost a river between the uh, 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 little uh, keys, islands, chaos, whatever you want to call them. These guides know the, uh, the uh, tides, the uh, wind drift. Uh, they just know exactly where to be at what time. And sometimes we'll be catching bonefish 10 minutes from the uh, hotel, floating hotel Tortuga, and uh, other times we'll have to go for hours. But uh, one bonefish, one hour through the ocean is worth it to me. Up the rope. Good. Good job. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's the job. Good job. Number three. Bone. Yes. Nice bone. Good. Nice. Tip, 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 tip. Cast again. A little more to the left. Yes. Tip it now. Tip, 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 tip. Okay, good. Letting go. Yes. Check it. Check in the line. Yes. Check in the line, yes. Keep the line tension, keep the line tension. Wow. Keep the line tension, please. Tension the line, stop the reel. Stop. <laughs> good. Nothing you can do about Very that. Very good. Just have to let them run. They get wrapped around in those mangroves. It's their home. We're in a part of the world that's famous for its fishing but equally as famous for its diving. Now we are, we are going to be diving in around five minute ride by boat. Right. Yeah, we will be 10 to 15 meters, no more than that deep. Okay, so a little less than we were earlier. Yes, okay. yes. Nice. And we have possibility to see sharks, but not sure, not 100% sure. Right. Doug Hayes is diving today with Mario and Carlos from the Dominican Republic. And around here, you usually have a pretty good chance of seeing some sharks. If you like sharks, then you've come to the right place. We're diving at Jardines de la Riena with the Avalon Fishing and Diving Centers. Okay, here we go. Dive number three today. Ready? <laughs> Doug Hayes of Oregon Tackle has had a busy and unforgettable day underwater, not only making friends with many silky and reef sharks, but also seeing the incredible fish and coral life of what divers typically call the Galapagos of the Caribbean. This unspoiled reef holds countless species and the clear water makes it ideal for underwater photography. Everywhere you look, something new is heading your way. The 45 minutes or so that you have underwater on each dive is not nearly enough, especially when the reef sharks show up. 
I never felt like we were in danger or sensed any aggressiveness from the sharks. They were actually very calming to me. But of course, the dive master kept a close eye on us. The Goliath groupers are also unforgettable and are actually more likely to bite a hand than the sharks. Between dives, you have to spend a certain amount of time out of water for safety. And this time, we've landed on a close-by beach where iguanas and rodents called hutias survive with no fresh water available other than what is in the food they eat or from short-lived puddles after rainstorms. But they sure do appreciate any handouts of fresh fruit. Bing, bing, bing! Boom, boom! There she is. For another break, we anchor in a small bay where crocodiles are called in by name. These are all wild animals, but with no reason to fear man, so they come quickly, hoping for a snack of chicken meat. This is fresh. It's better him having chicken for lunch than me for lunch. And that's probably not going to happen unless you taste like chicken. For taking pictures, it's possible to get right into the water with them. But my subject was a little too close to focus. But Mario got it just right. The Jardines de la Riena is great tarpon country, and it's just awesome to swim with these incredible sport fish. And on this day, Bruce was out having some fun with them also. Those who have had the opportunity to hook and fight a tarpon can appreciate their power, but being in their world for just a few minutes gives you a whole different sort of appreciation. As does being surrounded by reef sharks as they brush up against you. A day of diving will make you hungry, and for that, there might not be anything better than fresh lobster. Nice and fresh. Tonight, a lobster boat has pulled into the bay, so why not go on board and pick out a few for an incredible dinner? Welcome back to the Jardines de la Riena, about 70 miles off the southern coast of Cuba. I'm Justin Wolf. We're on a fishing and diving adventure with Avalon Fishing and Dive Centers, and today, Doug Hayes of Oregon Tackle is targeting bonefish, while Bruce Bells is spending the day underwater. We've got the shrimp presentation, and we've been noticing that they're hitting on shrimp a little bit out here, so I'm gonna dab a little bit of the super gel shrimp on each eye, just a little bit there, and a little bit there. We're gonna whip this thing out there and see if we can pick up a bonefish. Just a all right. Now. Tripping. There he is. Yes, let it go. Let nice it go. bone. Look at that thing rip. Nice bone fish. Oh, look at that baby rip line. It's a nice bone. Yeah, it's a nice bone fish. It takes three days to get down here, but this is what you come down here for right here. World-class bonefish. Doesn't get any better. Put the rope to the left up. To the left. Yes. That's a good bunny. Look at this size. This is a big one. That is a nice one. So if you look right ahead of us here, you can see the water is crystal clear. Then you've got a little murky spot right there, and that's typically bonefish feeding. So we're going to target that area and see if we can pull one out of there. Okay, that's now. Strip. Strip. Stop. Stripping. 
Grubby. Up, up, up. Yes. There he is. Yes. Just like that, just what we said. It's a big one, it's cool. Like there he is, on the reel. Really? Yes. This one is more small, but it's a bone fish, huh? Yet, maybe. Yeah, Still a little hot, is he? <laughs> yeah. The bonefish fell on this. Yeah, I saw the bonefish coming up behind him. On these flats, you're likely to see or catch other species, including sharks, barracuda, tarpon, and many pesky jacks, which will just add to the challenge. Yes. Very good. There he is. But the big one is cool, it's moved to the right. The big one? Yeah, the big one is cool, and the big one bump is just moved to the right. When it's fallen, the, yellow, the blue jack, Coming right at me, I got it real fast. Yeah, when he's following that jack, the big one was there, wasn't he? Catching release. That's a good release there. Yeah. With so many fish and so few fishermen, these bonefish are very willing to play. Even I can catch them. So with favorable conditions, catching several dozen in a day is not out of the question. If you're interested in a Cuban fishing experience, you can contact the Avalon Fishing Centers for details about the fishing and also advice on visiting Cuba legally. And special thanks to Mario Delgado for his great underwater photography. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode of Angler West TV. You know, it's only with the sponsor support that the show is made possible. So please thank them when you can. Now get out there and do some great fishing.